Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this spider themed cake to celebrate Halloween. So let's get right into it. I'm starting out with a six inch half ball cake that I've cut in half and I'm filling that with some Swiss meringue buttercream. Mine is this purpley color, but you can use whatever you want. I put that in the fridge for about 10 minutes just so it got slightly chilled and then I'm grabbing my serrated knife to start carving. I'm going around the bottom of my cake and cutting in on a slight angle, just leaving one little piece of it so it's pointed, so I get that classic spider butt shape. Just for warning you, I know nothing about spider anatomy, so you're gonna be hearing words like head, butt, leg. If those aren't correct, I do apologize. I'm not meaning to offend anybody who's like a spider enthusiast. So this was the general shape that I ended up with. And to lock in all those crumbs, I added a thin layer of my buttercream all around the outside of my cake and then popped that in the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill. Once you can touch your finger to the buttercream and none of it comes off, it's ready for the final ice. So I'm adding a dollop on top and then just spreading that out using my spatula. And to get my buttercream nice and smooth, I'm using a piece of cardstock. This just bends with the shape of the cake, so it's a lot easier to smooth it out versus using your spatula. That's going back in the fridge to chill, and now I'm gonna start on my cake board. I've got some mini marshmallows here in a bowl, and I'm gonna start melting those down at 30 second intervals. I've already got my board covered in red fondant. You can see I just painted it with some red food coloring gel mixed with a little bit of lemon extract. And then I'm taking some of that marshmallow on my fingers and spreading it out and then placing it down on the board. Moving back to my spider, I'm rolling out some black fondant to about an eighth of an inch thick and then I'm gonna pick that up and drape it over my chilled cake. Moving quickly with my hands, I'm smoothing that fondant down, starting from the top, just pushing all the arrow and then pulling the skirt as I work my way down. I cut away some of that excess and balled it up in my hands to gently buff over my cake. And then with my fondant smoother, I'm just pushing it in at the bottoms. I cut away the rest of that excess fondant using a pizza cutter, and then I gently picked my cake up and placed it down on my decorated board. To make the head portion of my spider, I'm starting out with this black ball of fondant, and I'm just shaping it into this oblongy type thing, and then tapering one end of it slightly. I'm using my fondant tool to mark in some lines. This was really loosey-goosey. I was looking at a photo you can pretty much do whatever you want if you want to make up a spider in your head. I was just roughly going off of a Black Widow type spider, but I'm sure it's in no way accurate. Using my balling tool, I marked in eight little sockets for the eyes to go into. And then I filled each one with balls of black fondant, but I did change this later on to be dark red balls of fondant because I thought it looked better. For the two fangs, I rolled out these two teardrop shapes and then with my X-Acto knife, just blunted the ends of them. I marked out where they were going to sit using my balling tool and then pushed them into place. I used a little bit of shortening to attach these. I added a little ball of black fondant underneath the head that was thicker towards the front of the face part so that when I attached it to the cake, the face would be angled up a little bit instead of being flat on the board. To make each of the legs, I rolled out eight long snakies of black fondant. I did four of them just a touch longer for the very front and very back legs. Towards the thicker portion of the leg, I curved it and then pinched it with my fingers to create kind of like a joint look. And then for the leg itself, you can see I've curved it a little bit. You don't want it to be straight up and down because it's gonna sit awkwardly on the spider. 
using my fondant tool, I just marked in a couple lines just to add the look of like joints on a leg. To make it so that I can attach these to the spider, I'm using some dried spaghetti. You can also use some wooden skewer and I'm just pushing that all the way into the top of my leg and making sure there is enough room at the end sticking out that I can insert that in. Once all your legs are done, you need to let these sit until they are dried completely. I let mine sit for two full days before I added them. If you're adding Tylos powder, that's probably a day. You just wanna make sure that they are super, super solid. Otherwise, they will break. Once the legs were dried, I added them to my cake. All eight need to be able to stick into that front head part, if you want to be correct. So it took a little bit of maneuvering. I started with the four smaller ones that were going to be going into the center. Next, I added the two front legs and then the back legs. I rolled out a snaky, a black fondant, and then wrapped that around each leg right at the base and used my fondant tool to blend that in a bit. To make the eyes look a little juicier, I took some red food coloring gel on my paintbrush and then just brushed over each one. I rolled out some red fondant and then with my X-Acto knife, I just cut out this random design. I looked at a bunch of different spiders. None of them really looked the same on the butt portion. So you can pretty much add whatever design you want. To finish my spider off, I also rolled out two long teardrop shapes and added them on either side just underneath the fangs for the feelers. And this was the final result, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every week. I have a ton more Halloween videos coming your way.